Today we celebrate an epiphany, not the epiphany of the Lord we celebrated last weekend, but a true epiphany nonetheless, the baptism of the Lord. This marks the end of the Christmas season. The decorations are gone, and we hopefully look back fondly on the family time and good feelings the season brought. We have spent 27 days anticipating the birth of the Messiah, and now 15 days celebrating his birth and infancy. Now, after today, we begin what we call ordinary time. An unfortunate misnomer, I think, because now we begin the story of the Messiah, beginning his journey to Jerusalem that will culminate in our redemption, and there is nothing ordinary about that. Our Lord began this journey with his baptism. Interesting, to say the least, especially when you consider John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. What could our sinless Lord possibly have to repent? Well, nothing, of course. Then why baptism? Pope Benedict the Bishop XVI, in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, offers this. Of course Jesus had no sins of his own to be washed away in baptism. So it could only have been our sins that he took down into the River Jordan. Jesus' baptism in the Jordan would begin the journey that his dying on the cross would complete, that he did both for us and for our sins. We believe, of course, that Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully human, like us in all things but sin. By this act of his baptism, Jesus deliberately and purposefully identified himself with us and all that it means to be human. He had fully emptied himself of his divinity and identified himself with our humanity in an act of total humility. One more sign of Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us. An act of perfect solidarity. The baptism of Jesus is also an act of unconditional submission to his Father, an unqualified acceptance and indeed the very inauguration of his mission. He is submitting himself wholly and entirely to his Father's will, knowing, of course, that it must ultimately lead to his suffering and death. Finally, Jesus is starting us on our path to salvation, as he did through his entire life on earth. He taught us by his example. He demonstrated by his, by his baptism that we must all begin our lives in him, with baptism. At Pentecost, a new family conceived in Christ would be born. Baptism was to be our entrance into that family. His last instruction to his apostles before his ascension would be to baptize all nations. By his baptism, Jesus made baptism holy, whereas he sanctified the waters of his baptism, we are in turn sanctified by the waters of our baptism, sanctified and pro profoundly changed. Our sins are forgiven, original sins and personal sins, as well as a temporal punishment do them. And yet, even more. When I was a youngster, back in the middle of the last century, baptism was almost totally identified with taking away original sin. Well, that was and is true. The sacrament is so much more. I am always surprised how many Catholics do not realize that through baptism all sins are forgiven, as well as the punishment due them. Consider, and this is easier to say than it is to comprehend, baptism makes us adopted sons and daughters of God. It is through our baptism that he, we have the right in that beautiful prayer our Savior taught us to call God our Father. This is an awesome notion, one that is uniquely Christian and should be most dear to our hearts. For many non-Christians who see God as master, 
find our concept of God as Father blasphemous. We are indeed sinners. We need to be saved. We cannot save ourselves. But in his son's humanity, the father sees our humanity. In his son's divinity, the father sees each of us and he loves us and wants to bring out what is best in us. And as the father reveals his pleasure at his son's baptism, completing the epiphany begun 30 years earlier, which we fittingly celebrated last week, we too, at our own baptisms, become his beloved sons, his beloved daughters, in whom he is well pleased.